Hello. Good afternoon. Hello. <laughs> there we go. All right. Uh, thank you so much for coming. This is amazing seeing everybody here. I'm really excited to talk to all of you today. So my name is Nir Zickerman. I'm the Vice President and Global Head of Audiobooks at Spotify. And I'm really excited to be here talking to all of you. I'm honored to talk to all of you. It's a really exciting time for me and my team. It's our first year at the Frankfurt Book Fair, or my, my first year at the Frankfurt Book Fair, and it's amazing being here. So I'm here to talk about the future of audiobooks, and I'm here to talk about how Spotify factors into that. But I actually want to start by talking about something completely different. I want to take you back in time to the year 2015, and I want to talk about a different industry altogether, podcasting. In 2015, there were only about 200,000 podcasts in existence. There was one dominant consumption platform, and there were 200 million people listening to the format monthly across the world. Flash forward to today, 2022. There are now four million, over 4 million podcasts on Spotify. That is 2,000% growth of supply in a period of seven years. And the number of people who listen to podcasts has more than doubled in that period of time, now to almost half a billion worldwide. So what happened? What happened during those seven years? What changed? I want to talk to you about that. And what I'm hoping to convince you of today is that the change that we saw in audio, sorry, in podcasts over the last seven years is a change that we're about to see in audiobooks over the course of the next few years. First, let me tell you a little bit more about me. I've spent my entire career building tools to empower creators. I actually uh, worked for a few years in a completely different space at a company called Aviary, which was building uh, tools to empower creators in the photography space. We were acquired by Adobe. And then in 2015, the year that I mentioned earlier, it was uh, personally a very meaningful year for me because it was the year that I co-founded a company called Anchor. Anchor was a podcasting platform. And the goal, just like I said, I spent my career working on empowering creators. The goal of Anchor was to empower creators in that medium, in the podcast space. From the very beginning, the idea behind Anchor was simple. We believe that the podcasting space had massive untapped potential, and we wanted to be the company that was the catalyst for the growth to come. So what we did was we built best-in-class tools for the creation, distribution, and monetization of podcasts. And it actually worked. In 2019, Anchor, the company I co-founded, was acquired by Spotify, and I joined Spotify. And the platform continued growing, not just in terms of gaining market share, but also in terms of increasing the size of the overall podcast market. And today, Anchor actually powers more than 75% of all of the podcasts that exist in the world. The entire podcast market is now substantially bigger than anybody thought that it could be seven years ago when we started the company. One of the key reasons that the Anchor team was so excited to join Spotify when we joined in 2019 was that we saw how much Spotify values creators. Spotify's mission, our corporate mission, is actually to empower a million creators to live off of their art. And Spotify has pursued that mission for its entire existence, not only with innovative business models, but also by expanding the possibilities and the definition of audio and by enabling creators to monetize those experiences. Since its beginning as the pioneer of music streaming, Spotify has been dedicated to solving a complex problem, the problem of how creators actually get paid for their art and find and grow their audience. With the introduction of podcasts on Spotify, uh, and especially after acquiring Anchor, Spotify expanded that mission into the world of podcasting beyond music and it opened up multiple new avenues for podcasters to find their audience and to monetize their work. So how did this approach of empowering creators actually work? Well, we think about it in three steps. First, consumer access. Second, format innovation. And third, enabling creators to find their audience. Spotify has been instrumental in all three of these areas. For consumer access to podcasts, we took a format that had been relatively limited and hard to create and hard to access, and we made it available on a platform that hundreds of millions of people were using to listen to music. And we made it playable across all their devices. On format innovation of podcasts, 
we took a format that hadn't changed much in basically two decades, and we created brand new ways that nobody had ever seen before for podcasters to create a new type of content to reach their audience in new and interesting ways and to monetize that content in ways they couldn't before. And finally, on finding an audience, Spotify built the best-in-class podcast recommendation engine, just as we had built the best-in-class music recommendation engine before that. And on all three of these dimensions, we plan to bring the same exact approach to the world of audiobooks. So let me talk about why audiobooks. Well, the real reason is because we see the audiobooks landscape today in 2022 the same way that we saw the podcasting landscape back in 2015, having massive untapped potential. And the growth is coming. And like in 2015, we want to be the catalyst for that growth. The global size of the entire book market, from the estimates that I've seen, is estimated to be somewhere around $140 billion. That's inclusive of print books, ebooks, and audiobooks. But audiobooks actually only have a 6 to 7% market share of that $140 billion. But the category is actually growing really quickly. It's growing 20% year over year. And if you look at some of the most penetrated audiobook markets, like the Nordics, you actually see a market share for audiobooks closer to 50% of the entire market. What we believe is that there, that's basically signifies that there is a huge untapped potential for this market and pent up demand that has yet to be unleashed. And we plan to bring that across the world, just like we did for music and podcasts. In addition to the growth opportunity, audiobooks is also a space that has long been dominated by a single dominant player that gets to call the shots. And as I'm sure you all know, single dominant players in a space uh, make it really challenging to innovate and to grow. And so just by entering the field, by entering the space, by coming to the field, Spotify is actually going to be pushing the industry forward. We're going to be bringing our fresh take on what audiobooks can be. So why do we believe Spotify is the right platform to actually solve these problems? Well, we are already the platform of choice for people listening to music and to podcasts to over 433 million people worldwide. Our ambition is broader, though. It's not to be a music platform or a podcasting platform. It's actually to be the world's audio platform. And to do that, we need to be a single destination that offers users all of the audio that they want to listen to, including audiobooks. As I'm sure many of you in this room probably know, a few weeks ago, we actually launched our first ever dedicated audiobooks experience. We introduced on Spotify a catalog of over 300,000 titles available for a la carte purchase. This launch was specific to US listeners, but will be expanding very quickly to additional markets. So stay tuned for more on that in the coming months. We've been getting requests from users for years to add audiobooks to Spotify. We've been testing, researching, and listening to figure out how to create the best possible experience, because we know that introducing a new format type to our platform is no small feat. We've done it before. It's pretty tricky. But Spotify approaches product development iteratively. We're constantly willing to make changes based on listeners and creators' needs. And that means we want to partner with all of you, with everybody in this room and everybody in the fair. We're talking about authors, publishers, narrators, agents. We want to work with you to make sure that we're building and constantly improving the best possible audio experience that we can build. So the product experience that you can see now on Spotify in the US is the very first iteration of audiobooks on Spotify. There are a lot of features that we are really excited to be rolling out in the future. There are additional markets that we want to launch in. And there are ways that we want to innovate on the actual format itself to benefit listeners, authors, and publishers. So I want to take a minute to talk more specifically about that last point. How is it that Spotify is going to benefit authors and publishers? The first most impactful point here is that we are going to be introducing a user base over time of over 433 million monthly listeners to the format of audiobooks. And the vast majority of them have never listened to an audiobook before. As I mentioned, we started in the US, but we will be expanding quickly to more markets. Spotify is actually in 180 markets currently with podcasts and music, over 180 markets worldwide. 
And we know from our experience with introducing podcasts to the platform that people who are primed to listen to audio are more likely to adopt new formats as they get introduced to them. Part of the reason that Spotify has the broad reach that we have is because we're willing to offer multiple business models to fit the variety of needs that consumers have. We believe that philosophy also applies to audiobooks. So we're starting with an a la carte model. That's what we've now shipped in the US. But we will be introducing new business models in the future. We want to allow for more flexibility, not just for consumers to decide how it is that they want to unlock and engage with audiobooks, but also for authors and publishers that are choosing what the best model is for their own content. In addition to introducing a new global audience to audiobooks, we also have our sights set on making audiobook discovery on Spotify unlike anything that has happened before. In many ways, book discovery has a really long way to go. There are so many titles out there, amazing titles just waiting to be discovered, but they can't find their audience. Spotify has built best-in-class music recommendation systems, best-in-class algorithmic podcast recommendation systems, and you can expect us to do the same thing in audiobooks as well, so that every user on Spotify has the ability to find that next great read, regardless of what it is. We also plan to take an approach that was successful in growing the podcast market, which is we want to build the technology for authors and publishers to make great content and to find their audience. And for instance, uh, we want to have authors be given the tools to actually market their own content. And we want to give publishers tools in order to understand better how their content is actually selling on Spotify. Building great technology to solve complex problems like this is in our DNA. And we will continue to use that same iterative approach that I mentioned in the world of audiobooks. We believe strongly that one of the best ways to empower creators is by giving them the insights to understand who their audience is, and how they're engaging with their content. We've built tools like Spotify for Artists, for instance, for musicians, and Spotify for Podcasters, for podcasters, to gather these insights and make informed decisions about how to improve their content and how to reach their audience. You can expect us to build similar tools in the audiobook space. We want Spotify to be the best place for authors and publishers to get their audiobooks heard. But I also recognize that a lot of the opportunity that I'm talking about is in the future. So what I want to do is address some of the ways that you can take advantage of the offering that we've now shipped even today. The best thing you can do today is to educate your fans about how to find, listen to, and rate your audiobooks on Spotify. On discovery, we're finding that most audiobook discovery currently since we've launched is actually happening with users that are searching for specific titles on the platform. For most authors, their fans are actually already using Spotify to listen to music and to podcasts. And so just educating them about the fact that your work can now be found on the platform they're already using is a great way to unlock that audience and get them engaging with your audiobooks. Listeners also love hearing about some of the features that we've built that make their lives easier. For example, they can save audiobooks to their libraries for future purchase. They can listen across all of their connected devices, like smart speakers and connected cars. Spotify has thousands of integrations. Or using features like speed control or sleep timer. Getting your fans to rate your book on Spotify is also a great way to drive engagement, because the average rating of titles appears when users are evaluating what to listen to. So to make sure that uh, ratings are actually insightful and valuable, what we do is we make sure that users had to have actually listened to the content on Spotify before they can actually rate. We're also starting to build features that are aimed at empowering authors and publishers to grow their audience on Spotify, like I mentioned. In the next few weeks, we're going to be launching audiobook share cards, which are beautiful social assets optimized for social sharing to let fans know that they can listen on Spotify. These will be accessible on our promo cards website, URL is here, where you'll be able to search for your titles and receive images that are optimized for social sharing. We have seen really great success in creators and listeners alike sharing their favorite music off of Spotify and podcast using these assets. And we're really excited to launch this easy to use tool in the next few weeks to allow authors to spread the word about their content and start growing their audience on Spotify. 
I truly believe that we are innovating faster and are more focused than anybody else in audio. Again, I, I recognize that we're in the early days here. And a lot of the growth has yet to come. So you can expect a lot more from us in the future. We'll be announcing a lot more soon. But as we've shown with the way that we've approached music and podcasts, there is more opportunity than ever before for creators in this industry to succeed. Personally, I can't wait to look back on this time just like I now look back on 2015 and reflect on how much has changed in the next few years when we've built an audiobook industry that has unlocked massive opportunities for everybody in this room. Thank you so much for your time. Uh, if you want to reach out to me, my contact information is up here. I would love to connect with every single one of you. Uh, we are really excited to work with all of you uh, to build the future of audiobooks together. And uh, with that, I think we have some time for Q&A. So if anybody has any questions, I think we have a microphone that we'll be passing around. I think, uh, do we want people to come up? Okay, here, okay, I think back here, yeah. Hi, thank you so much. That was really interesting. Um, I'm interested in knowing about the criteria that you use to measure how artists can live off of promoting their content on Spotify. Thank you. Uh, that, that's a great question. I think the, the reality is we're in the early days of achieving that mission. It's a corporate mission that is a long-term mission for us to say that we truly want to enable a lot of creators to live off their art. Uh, I don't think today I can share a specific quantifiable measurement with you, but I do know that in order to achieve that goal, in order to actually truly allow a million creative artists to live off their art, we need to expand beyond the size of the current music industry and the size of the current podcast industry. We truly need to embrace all audio types and we truly need to reach an audience that is substantially bigger and more global than what a lot of these industries have seen before. Hello. Um, I come from Denmark. Um, and once uh, places like uh, Mofibo, uh, Through Storytel and all this came onto the scene, um, almost all our listeners left places like iTunes uh, and went on to Mofibo, for example. Um, so what is the audience that you are going for? That's a great question. Uh, the question, anybody didn't hear it, is who is the audience specifically that we're trying to target here? I believe that of the 400, over 433 million people that we have using Spotify, as I mentioned earlier, overwhelmingly most of them have never listened to an audiobook but they would enjoy the content, because as you all know, the content is one of the richest format types that could possibly exist. They just haven't been introduced to it in the right way. And I think one of the big things that I want to focus on is that casual listener. How is it that we make sure that every listener in the world who has a remote interest in listening to audiobooks is able to find a great title, start engaging with it easily in a variety of different ways. I mentioned multiple business models. We want to build different ways to serve the needs of all of these different uh, consumers and allow them to listen on a format that they're already comfortable using. That's a key point. Many, many people across the world are already using Spotify to listen to music and podcasts every day. And so introducing a new for format type in a casual way, in a way that's optimized for discovery and matching them with great content based on all the amazing machine learning that we can do, that's the way that we reach that critical casual listener. And I think the size of that market truly is substantially bigger than what this industry has seen to date. Thank you for the question. Thank you so much, that was so interesting. I was just wondering about how authors would get paid. Uh, you mean in our current model or? Uh, well, yeah, So how it would work. So in our current model, uh, we actually, several months ago, I think it was about four months ago now, we officially acquired a company called Findaway. Uh, you may have heard about that. Findaway in many ways actually is the infrastructure that powers our ability to deliver on the podcast experience. And so the a la carte offering that we now have is effectively built off of existing distribution that they already have in place. It's no different than the a la carte model that many of you are familiar with in terms of standard royalty payouts. And it's all powered through an amazing stack, um, an amazing technology platform that's been doing this for nearly two decades. Uh, as we explore new business models, Findaway will continue to be the mechanism by which we 
power distribution to the platform and pay out to publishers and authors as well. Hello, and thank you so much for the presentation. And my question is, um, will there be any limitations introduced to distribution of digitally narrated audiobooks, like using synthesized voices? Uh, that's a great question. So the question is about artificial voice and uh, what role, I guess, that plays in this entire future. The way that I think about synthetic voice is it's a supplementary opportunity to the business that you all are currently building. I think there's a lot of opportunity, particularly in reaching parts of the world maybe where there isn't as much supply or reaching audiences that can't otherwise be reached to supplement the existing business. But that being said, I do want to uh, address any concerns that people have when they look at a tech company like Spotify entering the space and saying, what are you going to do when it comes to synthetic voice? The reality is, our corporate mission is to allow creators to live off their art. I don't know how we would be able to do that if we weren't partnering with all of you and building this industry in a way that actually allowed you to grow and to flourish. I think synthetic voice is a way to amplify that growth and accelerate that growth, but I don't want to do it at the expense of working with all of you to make sure that your businesses grow and thrive. Thank you for the question. Hello, uh, thank you for your presentation. Um, my question is that, uh, is it fair to say that a majority user base of Spotify has also not sampled audio dramas? And uh, if that is the position, um, is Spotify worried about these two fictional audio categories almost competing with each other? Can you clarify who, who's competing with each other in this case? Sorry. So fictional audio dramas also exist on Spotify, like Q Code and Gimlet Media shows. So my first question is, is that, uh, is it also fair to say that the majority of the user base has not sampled these fictional audio dramas? And regardless of whether they have or they haven't, is Spotify worried about these two categories, audiobooks, which are typically a little more long form and audio dramas, which are a little on the shorter side, competing with each other? I, I, so I can generalize your question even further and say, do we believe that there's going to be cannibalization of the existing podcast experience with the audiobook experience that we build, or vice versa? I, I think, first of all, over the course of the next few years, as we have already seen over the last few years, the lines between these different formats are going to get blurrier. I think we've all seen it, and it's going to happen even more, because as you start becoming a world where all audio is able to get created in a very flexible way and monetized in a flexible way. What's a podcast that's monetized a la carte versus an audiobook that's monetized a la carte? It's unclear, and I don't know what direction that's going to take in the future. What we have found, though, when we introduce podcasts, for example, on the platform, is that overwhelmingly the consumption actually was net new. It was, it was new uh, consumption that actually increased the aggregate consumption on the platform. Users that consume music and podcasts on Spotify consume more audio, on average, than users who just listen to music. And so it is early days, but I truly believe that this will be additive to the consumption experience, and it won't be uh, cannibalizing. Thank you for the question. Uh, speaking of monetization, the, the content, um, now the platform is based on the subscription fee, the monthly subscription fee. So do you see in a further future business models maybe introducing a new model? Thank you. Yeah. So uh, we get that question a lot, whether or not we'll be introducing subscriptions to audiobooks in the future. It is a model that we're exploring. And as I mentioned, we are exploring lots of business models. Uh, ultimately, the way that I think about it is how do we reach that casual audience that I mentioned and truly unlock behaviors? And I think in order to do that, we're going to need to innovate on business model and on format and on discovery in a variety of different ways. Because the casual listener, even though I want to reach the casual listener, there is not just one casual listener. There are many different needs. They all have different expectations, different places that they're coming from, different reasons they're searching for content. And so uh, you can actually expect multiple business models in the future. It'll take time. We've started with a la carte, as I mentioned, and we'll be expanding that. Um, but there is a lot more to come.
Hi, could you name the business models you are thinking about? And could you name the remuneration models you would be trying to uh, introduce? Uh, unfortunately, I think it's a little too soon for us to share that. Uh, what I can tell you is we are going to be expanding a la carte to more markets in the near future, but beyond that, uh, you're going to have to stay tuned, unfortunately. We can't share too much just yet. Okay, and what about freemium model? Uh, freemium model for audiobooks meaning? Yes, are you thinking about it? Are you asking about an ad-supported model? A uh, freemium model like at Spotify offering to the audience. Uh, I think a f the equivalent of a freemium model, like what we offer on the music side, would be very different on the audiobook side and is something that hasn't been done before. Um, the Spotify music catalog is engaged with very differently because free users that uh, do not have premium have a lot of restrictions on how it is that they're actually allowed to engage with that content. But the way that I think about freemium is if it introduces the ability for users to casually get introduced to content and then convert because they engage with that content and they find a lot of value in it, then that definitely is a business model that I think we could explore. Um, and in a way, freemium actually sort of already exists with audiobooks today because you can listen to a sample of a few minutes at the start of every book and engage with uh, that piece of content and see whether or not you want the full thing. But whether or not there are other angles we could take to the freemium model beyond just the traditional sample, I certainly think there are, and that could be something we build in the future. Yeah. I think uh, this is the last question I think we have time okay. for. Okay. Yep. Thank you very much. By the way, this is very interesting and fascinating. We are already working with Find A Way and Spotify, so we are definitely in the in on the plan. Excited to hear that. <laughs> uh, one question I have is, do you think uh, or do you foresee any possibilities for publishers to uh, have a type of analytics that would give us an idea of how far our audiobooks are being consumed. Like obviously you can listen for 10 minutes and give up or you can listen to the entire thing, for example, yeah? I know that uh, analytics and transparency are a thing that I've heard is a big pain point in this industry. And as I mentioned earlier in my presentation, Spotify has built really great insights tools for both musicians, well, not just musicians, but also musicians and music labels as well as podcasters to get the type of insights that you're talking about here. Uh, it's early days and we are exploring what those insights are and doing it in a way that provides the most value to this, uh, you know, to authors and to publishers and to everybody else who would want to get access to that data. But you definitely should expect that in the coming years we will be rolling out features to help do exactly that, to provide the type of insights that you need to understand how your content's performing, how it's selling, how your audience is engaging, and most importantly, use that as a way to inform other decisions that you make about what content you want to create in the future. Um, so thank you for the question. I think that was, uh, we're out of time for questions. However, right outside this room, there are tables uh, to my right, your left, where we'll be hosting uh, drinks and hanging out. I have multiple members of the Spotify team here. We'd love to meet all of you. So if you're interested in sticking around for the next 30 minutes, we'll be right outside. And uh, please stay, have drinks, and have fun. Thank you so much for coming, everybody.